So uh, there's no doubt that uh, the organizational form has to change. Uh, the, um, the comment that was made this morning by Ari de Hus at the beginning of our meeting that the Limited Liability Corporation, which was an extraordinary kind of design innovation in the latter part of the 19th century, worked because there was a great shortage of capital. So it was a, a rethinking of the design that allowed lots more capital to flow into corporations. Um, and it, it was, as he said, fit for its environment. Uh, today, we have this bizarre situation where we have an abundance of financial capital, and yet we're still operating off the ground rules for when there was a shortage of financial capital. It makes no sense for anybody. Um, in addition, of course, we have these huge issues, which nobody really has any kind of solution for, but we know there's going to be lots of changes needed from climate change to toxicity and waste to the... Um, I've been intrigued to see how many people here keep coming back to the extraordinary concentration of wealth and growing gaps between the rich and the poor. I mean, it is the biggest source of in political and social instability in the world today. So um, we don't just have a problem of how to help the corporations grow more, uh, which was the case in the, in the latter part of the 19th century. We have a, prob a problem of, you know, what is the corporation? What's the game we're playing here? and what would be the rules of that game. I, I don't think there's any doubt that this will have to happen because I don't think many people would debate the fact that the corporation is the most powerful of all of our institutions right now. Whether we like it or not, it's the simple facts. So if we have these immense problems and imbalances growing in our society, uh, I don't think it'll be just change of corporate form or corporate redesign, but it's inescapable that that won't be part of the changes. Well, the term systems thinking is really a, a mixed bag, and I use it very, very cautiously. Uh, first, both words are problematic, but the word system is the most problematic. Because if you say the word system, the picture or image that pops up into most people's head is computer system. Like, you know, we need a systems expert here because our system's not working. The second most common association is management control system, as it's not my fault, it's the stupid system, right? So these are the two associations that come first to people, and neither of them is, is what we're trying to help people understand. So whenever I'm, I'm trying to help people understand what this word system means, I usually start off by saying, are you part of a family? Everybody is part of family. Have you ever been seen in a family people producing consequences in the family, how people act, how people feel, that aren't what anybody intends. Yep. How does that happen? Well, you know, then people can tell their stories and think about it, but that then ground, grounds people in, in not the jargon, you know, system or systems thinking, but the reality that we live in, in webs of interdependence. A family is fairly close-knit one. You can kind of see most all the key players. But still, even though we can identify maybe on a list of 10 or 15 names, here's all the key people in my immediate family, still the complexity of interactions amongst all those people is obviously such that consistently families produce outcomes that nobody wants, which is the other kind of, you might say, fundamental rationale for all of this. It's not to, quote, understand systems. That's an abstraction. It's to understand how it is that the problems that are the most vexing and difficult and intransigent that we all deal with come about.